Shielding in Undernight Inverth is one of my favorite mechanics in all fighting games. It's a nuanced tool that rewards the defender with small advantages. In the hands of an expert, it becomes an invaluable technique, but in the hands of someone new, it may bring more risk than reward. So in this video, I would like to explain how shields work, and when and where you should use them. First off, let's go over how to execute shield. The normal type is done by holding back or down back in D before an attack is blocked. You'll see a teal color spark if it was successful. <laughs> there are a few benefits for doing this. One is that you will gain some grid while the opponent loses some. This is very useful when trying to win the cycle. The second one is that you will get better frame advantage compared to a normal block. For example, an advantageous attack on block may become disadvantageous on shield, which may allow you to go on the offensive. There are a few more benefits, but it will require specific situations, so I will cover them later in the video. So far, this sounds pretty good, right? But a well-designed mechanic always has a fair risk associated with the reward. Let's talk about them. The first one is that you have to properly shield in the right direction. High attacks require to stand, and low attacks require you to crouch. If you feel the shield in the right direction, you take extra damage, combo hit stun is increased, and your grid breaks. And when this happens, you lose access to all grid-related actions such as assaults, creeping edge, shields, chain shifts, etc. This is one of the worst things that can happen during a match. As a side note, if you try to change shield directions, there will be some delay. You cannot immediately switch. So if the opponent does a fast high-low mix-up, you will most likely get your grid broken if you're not guessing correctly. You cannot do things like high-low fuzzy block while shielding. The second risk is that you cannot tech throws while shielding. It's similar to strikes, if you get thrown, your grid shatters. Third, if you mistime a shield and press D during block stun, your character will glow green and log into shield state for an extended period of time. What this means is that your character will be vulnerable to high-low mix-ups and throws. Let's look at a few examples. For the first one, we'll have Akatsuki do an aerial attack, then immediately follow up with a low strike. If shielded properly, the defender will be able to block the low. However, if it is done late, they will be unable to crouch block and the following low shatters their grid. For the second example, we'll have Mercava do a crouching A and dash up for a throw. If shield is successfully, the defender can break the throw attempt, but if the shield is late, the throw will be guaranteed and once again, the grid will break. On top of all this, you lose some grid and meter every time this happens. <laughs> Lastly, pressing D once will only shield one hit in an attack stream. If the opponent does multiple fast strikes, you will have to carefully aim for the hit that matters. You can't just hold down the button to shield all hits. <laughs> And if you're blindly tapping shield multiple times, you open yourself up to more grid breaks. With that said, you can tell that shields are strong, but comes with heavy risks and requires a certain level of precision to maximize benefits. So when should we utilize them? One easy way is to use it against zoners who are spamming attacks full screen. Some of these long-range characters do not have strong full-screen mix-ups, so it can comfortably shield and block one way. For example, if Batista or Kuan is mindlessly shooting projectiles full-screen, you can simply stand and shield. This allows you to gain grid to win Vorpal. You can then use this to force your way in with a chain shift or game meter for EX moves. <laughs> Recovery. 
Either way, this usually makes the zoner change their approach that may make it easier for you to get in. I made a video discussing this in more detail, so check it out if you haven't already. Another way is to use it as an anti-air. Most aerial attacks give the attacker advantage to continue pressure, but by shielding them, it often gives the defender advantage instead. Let's look at Nanasis Jump C. This will depend on the height, but she's usually advantageous on normal block. However, if we shield the attack, it will make her negative. Which means that if she is continuing pressure afterwards, you can interrupt it. Another great aerial attack to shield is assault attacks. These will make the attacker negative enough to become punishable in most cases. As for the attacker side, they can bait shields with empty attacks and immediately go for a throw or low. If the defender is holding the shield for too long, their grid will be broken. For this reason, I recommend tapping the button rather than holding it. Also, as a side note, if you are the attacker baiting, it is recommended to use an attack that whiffs, as there is more lag when landing without doing an attack. Third is to punish moves that are not normally punishable. For example, a lot of smart steer attacks are negative 4 on block, but cannot be thrown for a punish due to their pushback. But by shielding the last hit, it may allow the defender to do a strike instead of a throw. Fourth use is to create gaps or reversals. Let's have Hyde do a block string from 2A to 5B. On normal block, this is a true block string and there is no way to interrupt it. You can see me here mashing buttons but nothing is coming out. If I shield the 2A though, a gap can be created to do an invisible reversal. Fifth one is using a property I didn't mention earlier. Shields push the opponent slightly farther than a normal block. This can cause opponents to whiff buttons if they do specific block strings. Let's have Nasa do a 6 hit string. All this connects against normal blocking opponents. By shielding some of these hits, you can push her back far enough to have her last hit miss. You can then whiff punish this attack. <laughs> If the opponent is being predictable with their block strings, this is one way to retaliate. Lastly, shielding an attack can change the cancel properties on some moves. Rokava's dash C is an overhead that can be cancelled into his aerial projectile. This makes this lunging move safe from most non-invisible attacks. However, by shielding, this attack can no longer be cancelled into another move, making it punishable. <laughs> Just as a heads up, Merkava has another similar looking overhead, but this one's cancelled property cannot be changed by shielding. So you have to properly discern which attack you're defending against before retaliating. Alrighty, before we finish up this video, I would like to talk about a tendency I see a lot in new players that I highly recommend not doing. Well, unless they know what they're doing. That is shielding on wake up. When the attacker has a good knockdown situation, they can go for a strong mix-up, and it's very hard to predict what they are going to do. Most characters can do a fast low, assault, or delay throw, which can cause your grid to shatter if you guess incorrectly. And if you shield an attack, a lot of the times, it doesn't give enough frame advantage to retaliate since there isn't much you can do against characters that are doing gapless streams. So in this case, you are doing an action that has a lot of risk with very little reward. Of course, I'm not saying you should never do this, but you have to be very precise on your guesses for you to read the rewards. Don't do it just for the sake of doing it. Make sure you have a specific read and a punish for it. Hope that helped. Let me know in the comments if you have any other strategies involving shields. I know this is a lot of information to take in at once, so work it into your gameplay in small increments. Alright, until next time, have fun with fighting games.